Josh, as we both know, there's only one way to God, but there are many different paths that lead us to that one way. Tell us a little bit about your early days because you were brought up in a Christian family. Yeah, so um, where do I begin? Uh, probably at birth, I grew up uh, with my parents, my mom, dad, my sister, who's a few years older than me. Um, and yeah, they, so they came to faith two different ways. So my mom was grew up in the faith. Uh, her parents are sort of from the Caribbean background and they came over to the UK and my mum my, my just grew up in church. And my dad actually, he has got a powerful testimony. He grew up in sort of the southwest of England, Cornwall. He came over to London around sort of the latter teenage years and he had a miraculous sort of uh, um, miraculous experience where he came to know Christ. So from that, obviously, I was born and I grew up in the faith. Um, I remember getting baptised in the River Jordan in Israel uh, at the age of six. And yeah, just um, I think just having nothing fancy, no miraculous, uh, you know, experience, but just brought up in the faith of good, you know, um, Christian, obviously, parents. And they took me to church when they could. And they just they brought me up in, in the Bible and in, in the teachings of Jesus. And I've kind of never wavered. I've just followed that and I believed in it ever since I was a very young boy and still do now. And I, I've just followed that path. Um, one of the scriptures I remember say, train up, a, train up a child in the way they should go. When they're older, they won't depart from it. And that's, that's been my sort of testimony and how I grew up in the faith. As far as conversion experiences are concerned, mine was very different. Probably the opposite end of the spectrum. I had a definite conversion moment. But the important thing is, Josh, would you agree that it's not how we came to the faith as such, but rather that we're in it now and we know that we're in it? Totally. Like 100%. Everyone's going to come to faith differently. I've got so many friends, you know, that have come to faith in various different ways. Um, just look at some of the stories in the Bible, like Paul the Apostle, his sort of conversion was on the road to Damascus. And then all of a sudden, you know, there was a, there was a cry from heaven and it was like, oh my gosh, from one minute he's a murderer, next minute he's winning, you know, winning souls. So I think everyone comes to faith differently. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about it, because I think Jesus tells us to testify, doesn't he? And everyone has their own testimony. I have a testimony of just being brought up in the faith, nothing fancy, but that could help someone. And I'm called to share that. And, you know, someone else like yourself, Rev, um, come to faith a completely different way. And, and you have to share that testimony. So I think it's, it's great that we all have different sort of ways we come to faith. There's no right or wrong way. It's just whichever, whichever way the Lord calls us. Um, and we're able to share that to people and obviously, that, you know, be a witness really to other people. And for those people who are watching this, who probably maybe have not come to faith yet, perhaps, they're thinking to themselves, God's big, he's interested in the big things in our life, but maybe not the minute details and the everyday ongoings and happenings. What would you say to them? I would say maybe to have a different perspective. Um, I think about God, you know, maybe when I was younger, as this he's kind of far away, the man upstairs, he doesn't involve himself too much in, you know, the individual. But I, I, growing up and you know, as you learn and as you start reading the Bible, he's very interested in very key moments, your thoughts. He wants, he's in the still small voice. Um, he wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to speak to him. He's very interested in you. Um, hence why he done everything he's done. He created the world for us. He's, he died on the cross for our sins, for us. So he's very, very, how can I say, he's very interested in the individual. He's very interested in how you think and he's very interested in what you do and he wants to have a relationship with everyone. Um, but if you just read the scriptures, I think just having that change of perspective from he's a big God and he's almighty and he's all powerful, but he's, he's he wants to have an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. And that's why he speaks to his children. Throughout the Bible, you see all the stories. He's speaking to Moses. He's speaking to Abraham. He's speaking to Paul. He's speaking to uh, Peter. He was, he became a um, obviously he came down and manifest in human flesh and he, he wanted to have a relationship with people. So I think it's just how changing the perspective on how we view God sometimes can really shift. Oh, God's so far away to know actually he's very close to us. And growing up in London, you got picked up by West Ham United's Academy. Did you see the hand of God in that? Uh, well, I guess I was quite young at the time, but like I said, just had, I had a really good upbringing. My parents really... Uh, helped me and, and taught me so much and they they brought me to places my dad often brought me to football 
Um, and he just, they just really sold into my life. And I just think, obviously, my dad had a bit of football ability and he noticed that in me. So he just started taking me to sort of the local Sunday League side. Um, and then I never forget actually this one experience. Maybe, maybe it's God working in my life, come to think of it. So uh, a friend from church. So we would, we also played this local Sunday League um, sort of, let's call one of the flats in East London. And we were driving home that one day and we come, it was a one way road. And I think my dad or this other lady was coming down the other side of the road the wrong way, basically. But they both got out of the car and they realized they recognized each other from church uh, from back in the day. So I was like, okay. Um, and then she was saying her son plays, he's got trials at West Ham. And my dad was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Like, obviously my son plays fancy, get one of the scouts to come and watch him. And that's how we, I sort of, got scouted for West Ham initially back, back when I was maybe six, seven. Um, and that's how it all began. And then obviously I, I did well and signed on and then just went up through the academy. So I, I guess if you want to look at it that way, it's interesting how things work out, but that's that's the story. I think meeting someone down a one-way street, going the wrong way. Yeah. Were you going the wrong way or there? I, I'm not too sure. but I, I, <laughs> one, one of you is going the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. It was either that, I, I'm pretty sure, but, or it was... The road is basically where there's so many Sunday League teams play. So whether it was one, if it was one way off, it was just Ramo. Um, but they had to get out of the cars for some whatever reason because they noticed each other. And it just ha so happened that my dad knew this other lady who was Julie um, and her son Marcus Brown. He is currently playing at Oxford United. Um, they just re recognised each other from obviously church and, and from sort of back in the day. And and yeah, they just exchanged details again, reconnected, and that's how I got scouts come and watch me play. So. This worked out, I guess. I, I guess we all know that God works in mysterious ways, so, yeah. and that could well, probably, most definitely, is one of them. While you were at West Ham's academy, you're now starting a new path in life. How did you find it as far as being a Christian was concerned? Did you feel pressured, subdued? Were you able to share freely your faith? What sort of situation did football present to you at that time? Yeah, so as I grew up, I was sort of, as, you're just a young kid, you sort of just trying to enjoy your football and stuff. And a lot of the games were on a Sunday as well, so I didn't really get around to going to church too much. But like I said, because I was in that uh, family, a heavy Christian influence, um, I always maintained my faith. I, I always knew who Jesus was, um, was encouraged to read the Bible. Uh, but then it came to sort of my latter years, when I started turning a teenager, and really growing in my faith then. Um, I really thought I was the only Christian football player, if I'm honest with you. I think I saw, um, I forget the name, he used to play for Portsmouth, I forget the name, uh, but he, I remember... Linvoy Primus. Linvoy Primus, that's it. Uh, he was probably the only person I saw, I think it was maybe some sort of interview or something where he sort of shared his faith. And I was like, oh, that's a, that's a Christian football player there. There's at least two of us. Yeah, there's at least two of us, yeah. So um, I remember, I think it was around the age of 15, 16, and one of my friends who I sort of started coming real close, friends with at West Ham, his name was Manny, and he got connected with another uh, chap who played for another sort of non-league side. And he was a Christian footballer and he was hosting an event uh, for just footballers that are Christian. So I turned up and lo and behold, there was maybe about 100, 100 of us. And I was like, oh, look at all these Christian football players. So I started connecting with other Christian football players then. And the good thing about fellowship and community is that you're able to develop in your faith. So I guess, you know, we that's when the F3 started our charity group. And I was able to sort of learn and grow. We had Zoom calls regularly. We met at each other's houses regularly on a, on a Sunday, on a day off. And, and that gave me just the, the boldness and, you know, I had the education then to really start sharing with my teammates. Um, and I guess when you're sort of in fellowship on a regular basis as well, it starts coming out of you. Um, so I was just more conscious of trying to show Christ in my life and the Holy Spirit just working through me. And it definitely influenced a lot of the, the lads at West Ham. Um, I remember my last year uh, when I was there, I think it was 2021, there were so many lads in the dressing room, in the 23 dressing room at the time, that started coming to the F3 fellowship groups. And uh, two of them got baptised. And there was just a, there was a real desire to re read the Bible and pray together. And it was fantastic. Um, and I just thought to myself, wow, this is like, this is God really working in the dressing room. Um, so just, yeah, just being faithful and just, you know, God works out things for your good. And I believe that he aligned things where I was able to meet those other Christian footballers. Now there's a network of us, there's loads of us, and we all are bold and love to express our faith and love to share what Jesus has done for us. 
So if I look back on it, it's never really been any sort of backlash or anything. I think a lot of the non-believing uh, teammates I've had over the years, which are majority footballers, they're, they're very respectful. You know, they appreciate that I have, I have my beliefs and, um, you know, I, I'm grounded in my faith and bold about it. And they respect that. And I think, um, so it's just been a good experience, really. And as things developed at West Ham, obviously, as you've just shared there, lots of Christian input, lots of Christian contact with people. Then you moved to Coventry City. Was that in some ways, from a spiritual perspective, out of your comfort zone and into a fresh challenge? It was. in a, it, Yes, it was to a degree, because I first time sort of moving away from home as well. Um, so obviously, I was in London, grew up in London. Um, and then this is now I've moved over to the, to the Midlands. So I was by myself um, and I, I knew one or two of the players that were there already, actually. But yeah, I was still very grounded in my faith. I, I believe what Jesus has done for me. I, I, I knew my, I read my Bible regularly, I still do. And um, it was a new challenge because it was like, but in, in a good way, because it's, you know, there's plenty of lads here that don't know the gospel. They, they don't, haven't really heard about Jesus and it's an opportunity for me to sort of share with them. That's the way I looked at it. Um, but it is challenging. Obviously, you're in a new environment. You don't know necessarily all of the players. You don't know how they work and, you know, maybe their past. And, you know, you just got to be mindful of how to sort of, you don't want to sort of stop Bible bashing. But just, you know, wherever you can, you're striking up conversations with players, just sort of sharing your faith. And that's what I just, that's what I've done when I was at Coventry. So overall, it was a good experience. Um, but definitely it was, a, it was a new challenge for me when I moved up there because I've never really left home uh, up to that point. And were there other Christians at Coventry City or were you a lone light in the darkness at that stage? Yeah, so I was probably the only one. Um, I was probably the only professed Christian. Maybe a lot of the lads would say they sort of grew up in a Christian or Catholic household. Um, but interestingly, I remember, I think it was my second year that I was there. And um, all of the lads came up to me and says, oh, there's a new chaplain. Um, you know, he wants to have a conversation with you. And they were, this, chap, this new chaplain came in, he was kind of a younger guy. You think of chaplains are quite sort of the older, older guys. He was a very young chaplain, must have been in his like, mid-20s at the time. And he's like, all the lads were telling him, oh, you need to speak to Josh Pass, you need to speak to Josh Pass. Yeah, he's a Christian as well. So I got connecting with him. And I remember my second year that I was there, um, it was really quite powerful because he was young, he was on fire for God as well. And he, he came into dressing room on a regular basis and started sharing about his faith with the lads. And it was great. And I was just... It was good to have another believer there at the time. Also had my F3 fellowship group. We met every Friday uh, over Zoom and we still do. And that was good to have that community, that fellowship there as well at the same time. But yeah, that was it. I just remembered that um, having the chaplain there, still connecting from now, his name's Kieran Joseph. Um, but yeah, God always works it out where you're, you know, he places someone in the clubs where, you know, they're sharing the same faith with, as you and you're able to sort of connect just like we are, you know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, God always works things out for you. So. And, then, and then you went to Newport County as well for a, a shorter period of time again. Any Christian connection there? No, not necessarily uh, in terms of the players. I did meet up with a, a few fans. So another like, situation with that, um, one of the fans, he got connected with me and it turns out he knew one of my friends from London because they, they're inter they, they do sort of Christian sort of rap music. And I don't know how it happened, but he kind of just got connected with me over Instagram and he was a Newport County fan. He lived in Newport. So I just got connected with him, met him after uh, uh, one of our games. And yeah, just sort of spoke to, spoke to him and spoke to his dad and just got connected with him. So, you know, met a new person out there. But yeah, it was just being a witness, just living a life of, of devotion. And, you know, people, the boys knew I was a Christian. And if I could, I could share uh, where I could about my faith. And the reason why I rose is because obviously... Um, it's a common theme of just sharing your faith. But I believe it's the most important thing and it's the best thing you can possibly speak about. You know, salvation, um, eternal life. I think there's no greater thing to tell someone than the gospel message of Jesus. So wherever I can, I try and just, yeah, I'm a Christian and I go to church and then just see where the sort of, we like to say, where the spirit leads. But um, just see where the conversation goes. And you often find that people have a lot of questions. They they either come down the sort of the route of creation or um, right and wrong. And then you really start striking up good conversation because everyone's got a story to a certain extent. And I think Jesus plays a part in that. Um, and, but sometimes it's like a hole that needs to be filled. And sometimes just, just witnessing and just sharing, you never know where the, the conversation can go. 
as we both know, Josh, especially for footballers, it's a very transient experience. And from Newport County, you ended up at the New Saints. Certainly got a, a biblical name there. Sure. Again, as I asked you originally about the Lord's leading, did you feel any particular spiritual direction when you came to the New Saints? Or was it just a case of circumstances coming together? Yeah, I think I had the interest um, come in when I was at Newport County. Um, and obviously I knew the manager at the time. Um, I had a good relationship with him. When I was playing at West Ham, he was one of the younger coaches at the time, uh, younger Asian coaches. So, yeah, I think it just made sense for me. I, I, I prayed about it because um, it was a tough decision to make. I had a few other interests as well. So I just needed to think about what was best for me and my family and ultimately where the Lord wanted to, to, to take me. And lo and behold, I you know, decided to come here and I thoroughly enjoyed my sort of first year um, going into the second year now to start the season. And obviously I remember... I think it was on the first day I met you and you had an interview and, you know, met another Christian, which is great. And I was like, well, of course, what, you know, God always places people in positions and situations where you're able to connect. And he certainly did with us, uh, Rev. So, yeah, I, I've enjoyed my time here so far and hopefully hoping for a good season. And, yeah, like I said, just to share my faith with other lads in the dressing room. Well, I was going to mention the first time we met because we did the initial interview like we do with all players that sign for the club. We were in the gym at Park Hall and Sam was setting the stuff up while he was doing that. We were chatting and I was finding a little bit about you as well that we could bring into the interview, anything specific or humorous or whatever it might be. And I remember when we were talking and you were married and I asked you, where did you meet your wife? And you asked me, am I married? Yes. Where did you meet yours? Yeah. I said, in church. Yeah. You said, are you a believer? I said, yes, I am. Yeah. Are you? You said, yes. And yeah. of course, we went from there. But as you mentioned that already, Josh, about the, the fact that you, you prayed about it. Is it important, do you think, for people to pray about even the smaller things in life and not just the big things? I would say pray about everything. Um, the Bible tells us to pray uh without season and anything we think of anything that may be causing a bit of anxiety a bit of worry a bit of uncertainty just pray about it you know it doesn't have to be any fancy prayer um god understands he knows all things um, and he wants to have a conversation with you you have to think of prayer as like sort of a monologue where it is really a dialogue um and and a lot, a lot of the time it's prayer and i'm just reading the bible as well because i believe um that the Bible is sort of the manual, it's a blueprint for life. And all the answers to everyone's questions are found in that book. Um, and, you know, Jesus tells, tells us, uh, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. So a lot of the times it's just praying, uh, it's having that conversation and, and, you know, you will get an answer. You might not get it exactly how you think you're going to get it, um, but the answer will come. So I would encourage anyone that's experienced a bit of anxiety, a bit of worry, don't know what to do, maybe you've got a new job opportunity to come up, or, you know, a new career path and, you don't know if it's right for you, I would 100% say prayer about it. There's, there's no negative thing that can come from praying, you know, none. Only positive things can come. Even if you don't really believe that there's a God, I would just encourage you to pray. You never know. Um, you might answer your prayer. So um, I, I would strongly recommend anyone that's um and an R in or our prayer doesn't make sense or it doesn't work or there is no God, just try it. Whether you believe or not, just try it and you might get your prayer answered. And God's a lot closer, isn't he, than, than many of us realise in our lives. I wanted to finish, Josh, with something that you already made reference to, F3. That's a ministry based around football. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned previously, um, we we had a first conference, if you would like, uh, and there was just a bunch of football players there, and I was like, oh, this is great. But something definitely needs to carry on from this. Uh, so we continue to meet up. Um, a good friend of mine, Daryl, and Toby Show Silva. He's currently playing at Maidenhead at the moment. Um, he, he, he's still playing football, and yeah, they just we just started this community uh, where we, as football players, can meet up, whether that's in person um, or over Zoom, and just fellowship with each other, just have a bit of Bible study, um, share what we're going for at the time. You know, as footballers, the journey is like a roller coaster. It really is. It's one minute you're getting promoted, or one minute you're getting relegated. One minute you're in the team, one minute you're out of the team. One minute you have a good game, the next you have a bad. One minute you're injured, one minute you're fit. So it's just, it is literally like a roller coaster. And if we let, if we attach 
our emotions to the outcome of football or the result of football will be like emotional wrecks. Um, so I find it a blessing really to have a group of people who are going through the same experience and who are seeking after the same thing, which is Jesus, and just to help each other out. And it's a community where us as footballers doesn't have to, there's players from all over the place, like overseas, um, Germany, the Premier League players, non-league players, players playing in the USA. Um, and we all just congregate over Zoom on a Friday and just have a Bible study and, and pray together. And I think it's an amazing thing. Um, and I'm so glad we started it. Now there's there's other sort of uh, communities. There's Ballers in God as well, run by John Bostock, who's playing at Notts County at the moment, which is a massive community of football players um, who fellowship together as well. So now there's a real like uh, group of football players who are after Jesus. And a lot of them are bold about it, which is great. Um, and it just started, you know, a few years back. And we continue to sort of bring people in. And I've brought a load of my teammates onto the calls as well. And they've been encouraged. So it's just a great community to be in. And it's just a place where footballers can just speak and, and feel open to speak freely without any judgment. And just read the Bible and pray together. Well, we're both down here in Cardiff. Of course, a game for the New Saints tomorrow. That's why you've got your TNS top on there. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Josh. You've been fantastic. And I think we could finally say, watch this space for part two and maybe more beyond that. Yeah, well, we'll have a second conversation very soon, Russ. Awesome.